Ricky Thompson on Wednesdays in the 4 o'clock hour. He joins all three of us, Craig and Paul. I'm David Smoke on 365 Sports. So as a sideline reporter slash analyst, as a former Baylor wide receiver, are you having a bad week? I think the answer to that would be yes. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, that, that was uh, disappointing Saturday. We played so much better, I thought, and, well, really every area, I think, versus the week before. I don't think there's any question. And I'm not sure if it's not even worse that in this game, I never felt like against Texas State we were really in a position to win the game the way it was going, but this one we were and against a very good football team with a backup quarterback. And then to let it slip away, uh, that one hurt. Uh, wasn't in a very good mood when I got home that night. So I think everybody just kind of left me alone. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky, what would you say is the problem of a team who finds different ways to lose as opposed to one where you can pinpoint the reason it always loses, like if they can't stop the run? But – this Baylor team is, I said yesterday, like playing whack-a-mole. Like as soon as they think they fix one thing, another thing pops up, and that's why they lose a game. I, Paul, I, I think a lot of that leadership, and I'm, and I'm not knocking these players and saying there's no leaders out there because if there's anybody that supports them, it's me. I, but I just think, go back to 21 and and. and that season with guys like Terrell and Taquan Thornton on the offensive side and the offensive line and Jalen Petrie, those guys found a way to win the game. I mean, how many close games did we have that year? You finished 12-2, and two, mm -hmm. and there were a bunch of games that could have gone either way, and it seems like we ended up winning them all. There were those one-score games, tight games. And I'm just not sure that these guys quite know how to do that. And it's really hard to pinpoint it. I mean, there's so many different areas, I think, that have been a problem in getting over that hump that I don't think you can get a, go to any one item, any one player, not even any one position. Ricky, uh, could you sense a different pep in the step, uh, a little bit of a different energy? It seemed like they – you know, knew how the Texas State game was um, and did their best to correct it. Obviously, it didn't show in the result, but it, it seemed like a team that had a little more feistiness about it. Could you sense that down there, or was that, uh, you know, not really the case from, from the press box view? No, absolutely, Craig. I, I don't think there's any doubt. You, I mean, this, this Utah front is really, really good, and – I didn't think we would run the ball on them based on what I saw the week before, but I thought we were really successful running the ball, had had good luck doing so. I thought we really got after them up front. I thought our running backs really ran hard. Dominic Richardson had a heck of a game until he took the lick on his leg with the helmet. Uh, of course, then, then Sawyer got tweaked an ankle, and he had had a couple of good runs, including the touchdown. So, yeah, I thought it was a different football team. I thought the fire was there. I thought they played really hard. I thought they were playing against a really good football team. And to me, uh, I know that Cam Rising wasn't playing, but I also know that Blake Shapin wasn't playing. So I don't think you align that, and you're lined up against the Big Twelve champ, Big Twelve Pac-12 champion, and absolutely pay, played them toe to toe until the fourth quarter. Sawyer Robertson made some mistakes. I think one pick might have been a, a broken route or communication issue. Uh, and then, of course, there was the deadly pick near the end of the game. Overall, how do you feel being down on the field? I know it's loud, but overall, how did you see him handle his first ever coll uh, collegiate start? I, I thought he handled it fine. I mean, we're talking about a completely inexperienced guy at the college level. Uh, the week before, he took his first snap under center ever in a ball game, including junior high and high school. So quite a change for him. And then to get that first start against Utah, as we said, Pac-12 champions two consecutive years, I thought he handled it well. I thought his game changed when he hurt his ankle. Uh, and that was I thought that was obvious. The first interception, that ball was to Josh Cameron. I was behind that play and 
happened to be watching that one pretty closely. I don't know what the call is for the receiver and the quarterback, but if I had my guess, I think Josh slowed his route down. I thought he saw a safety flash and maybe he sat down instead of continuing the route that Sawyer thought he was going to run. So I think maybe you can put that uh, more so on receiver than quarterback. The second one, uh, young guy, you just I know he was about to take a sack and maybe lose eight or nine yards, but in that case, you just eat it punt the ball away and and try to hold them because once you throw the pick they're on what the 35 yard line 30 that was pretty much the ball game ricky how much can this be a get right game for baylor oh paul i don't know i i I mean against a team like long island i'm not knocking long island but this is a team with all respect to them we should go in there and dominate this football game and i don't know how much you get right dominating a team you're supposed to dominate does that make sense Mm -hmm. yeah i I just i think it would be more so if you were coming in and playing a a texas tech or houston or a big 12 opponent and you really just took it to them and won the football game and won it handily i think that's a get right game I think there's just this is just a game that you've got to win and you need to dominate or you really continue that negative trend of the way the season's going. So more than get right, I think this is just one that you've got to have and you've got to go dominate. And I think they will, but I also think you have to. Yeah, kind of, kind of. In, I mean, yeah. If they don't, then I mean, the the hot seat's Jeez. blazing like a five, you know, alarm fire. Uh, but I mean, just how much do you think just getting a win against somebody would help this team psyche and just kind of everything, Ricky? Not that it would be some massive win, but just to snap the losing streak, to to have some guys who are freshmen and and younger players playing, just taste a win right before conference play. Do you think that's important, or or is that a little bit overblown? Uh, no, I don't think it's overblown at all, I, particularly when you've lost, what, six in a row? Yeah. Going back into last year, I I think that is a very valid point. And uh, we could be playing my old high school, Gatesville High School, and get the win and add some momentum. And, and it's just that feeling after a game of coming into the locker room after win and getting to celebrate a little bit and feel good about yourself for the next week. So, I think it goes a long way to beat anybody. So uh, maybe the timing of Long Island coming in is better than uh, than even I could think. But I, I still think it will be better to come in and beat somebody like a Tech to get that really the season on the right track. But yeah. right now, we take a win against anybody. It, it's been a long time, guys, since we felt that. In Jeez. fact, yeah. I can remember the game. It was in Lubbock. And uh, that one felt really good with no idea it would be the last for some time. Ricky, when does a situation like what they're in right now, even Long Island, whoever they were playing, if they're playing Georgia, but is there a concern about at some point if there's not a beacon of hope or some nice plays made that they start to play uptight? Sure. I just think that's a, that's a logical result, and I don't think necessarily does that – have to do with coaches or players that's got to do with us as humans Mm -hmm. i just think the more you lose like that uh it 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 plays with your head i mean i've been there and you can think all you want about the next time out you're going to win but that that little voice in the back of your head gets louder and louder and uh i just think in some cases that's unavoidable and i think it's a very fine line you walk with coaches and players uh, to try to keep that behind you or away from you or out of your head as much as you can. But uh, that's a tough chore. Ricky, what's the, what's the worst losing streak you ever had to deal with? Oh man. Why would you ask me that? <laughs> I, I, I really appreciate that, Paul. I, I, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> you send me the bill that you go when you go to therapy. Well, I know that Craig and I appreciate you, Ricky. We appreciate you being a part of it. Thank you very much. We'll see you Saturday. Right, thanks, Thank you, Ricky right, Thompson, former Baylor and NFL receiver Ricky Thompson, Baylor sideline radio analyst.